All right, forensic students, welcome back. Today we are talking about death and the human body. Um, so we're going to get a definition for death, and then we're going to talk about the process that the body undergoes post-mortem. Um, so after death, the process that the body undergoes um, in decomposition, we're going to specifically talk about those different steps. Now, before we jump into that, I want to get straight on a few definitions. So in forensics, manner of death, cause of death, and mechanism of death are often really confusing to students. Um, and they're used interchangeably, but they should not be. So manner of death, cause of death, and mechanism of death are three different processes, or they have three different definitions. So we're going to go through, we're going to talk about the definitions and give you some examples so that you don't mix these terms up. So starting with manner of death, uh, manner of death is defined as how death came about, and it's a judgment based on circumstances that surround a fatal event. Now, there are four manners of death, so natural, accidental, suicide, and homicide, and then if one of those can't be determined, then we say that the death was undetermined. And um, when a person dies, a death certificate is created, and one of these five options have to be um, written on the death certificate. So natural death is quite simply when the body just ceases to function on its own accord um, or if there are mitigating medical factors like a terminal illness or heart disease uh, or a medical condition that would bring about death. Sometimes this is just referred to as death by natural causes, which you may have heard that term before. Um, and then we have what's called accidental death. And as the term would suggest, this is the death of an individual by means other than natural causes, murder, or suicide. Uh, so accidental death can be something like manslaughter, which is the unintentional death of another person. Um, or it can be something that's called death by misadventure. Uh, and this just simply means that the victim has died by an accident while doing something that they either shouldn't have been doing or they were taking risk that put them in mortal danger. Um, according to the CDC, poisoning, um, at the recording of this video, poisoning is the number one accidental death um, and followed by motor vehicle accidents and falls was number three. So um, that's just some information there about accidental death. Suicide is the deliberate taking of one's own life, um, and that's due to a number of different factors. And then we have homicide, which is the taking of one human life by another human being, um, and oftentimes this is premeditated. Um, and so we'll get into that term a little bit later in a future lesson. Again, if natural, accidental, suicide, or homicide can't be determined by an investigator or a pathologist uh, or a coroner or medical detective, then undetermined is the classification for a person's manner of death. Now, cause of death is defined as the reason or the event that precipitates death. So this can be disease, uh, shooting, strangulation, this can be a heart attack or kidney failure or blunt force, force trauma. Um, so all of those are examples of causes of death. And the mechanism of death is the actual process or the organ or organ system that fails as a result of something that happened previously. Um, so this could be blood loss or extreme blood loss. This could be uh, something that happens with the brain that causes it to cease functioning or like pulmonary arrest where the heart stops beating, um, but that is mechanism of death when we're talking about the specific organ or organ system that failed as a result of something else. Now moving into the definition of death, it's very difficult to provide you with a definition for death because not all experts agree on a definition. Um, in fact, most experts believe that death can be defined as the cessation or end of life, but the question becomes, well, what constitutes the end of life? Uh, so you have one side that says that life ends when a person's heart stops beating, and then you have another group of experts that believe that life ends when the brain stops working. Um, but either way, 
And there's a lot of controversy surrounding the definition of death, but all experts do agree that death is a process and it's not just an instant event. So when somebody dies, um, the first stage, we're going to talk about this in just a second, but the first thing that happens is a process called autolysis. Um, so immediately after death, the blood stops, the heart stops beating, the blood stops circulating. So then cellular respiration stops. Uh, the body doesn't have any way of getting the oxygen that it needs or removing waste. So what happens is excess carbon dioxide causes a very acidic environment for our cells. Cells can't survive in that in that environment. So the cellular membranes begin to rupture or burst. We call this process autolysis. Um, and then they release enzymes. And then the process of death goes from there. Again, we're going to talk about that um, in just a few slides over. So again, death is a process. It doesn't just happen. Um, it's a process and it happens at the cellular level. All right, so if you are one of my students, you have this worksheet. Even if you don't have this worksheet, um, I want you to pause the video in just a second and I want you to research the five stages of human decomposition. So after death, what happens? Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. Okay, there are some great videos about this on YouTube. Check those out. Um, just do a quick Google search of five stages of human decomposition and then come back and we'll move through the different stages and talk about what you have researched. All right, so hopefully you took the time to do that. Um, so once a person dies, they go through these five stages. Now, sometimes these stages are grouped together. I know sometimes stage three and stage four are grouped together. And sometimes some websites you'll find only four stages of human decomposition. Or you might find six stages where they have broken maybe dry remains into two separate, um, two separate stages. Uh, but basically... Uh, human decomposition, which is the natural process of breaking down tissues after death, it follows this progression no matter um, who you are or what you die from. Now, there are different rates that this process occurs at. So the rate of human decomposition does vary. Um, and it can vary according to different factors like the weather, temperature, uh, how much moisture is in the environment, different pH levels and oxygen levels. It's also dependent on the cause of death, how somebody dies, what position their body is in when they die. But all humans generally follow the same progression of human decomposition. So what is this progression? So after death, you have the first stage. Now here, I, I labeled it fresh. Sometimes it's called fresh. It goes by other names too. You might have researched um, and seen autolysis as an option. Um, there are a few other names too. But this is the first stage of human decomp. Um, again, this is what happens at the cellular level. So the blood stops circulating, cellular respiration stops. The body has no way of getting the oxygen that it needs, so it builds up this carbon dioxide um, and it produces the acidic environment. Now, those cells are not going to be able to grow and survive there, so they're going to rupture from the inside out and produce those enzymes that are going to start um, eating away at the body. So microbes show up and they grow and they become abundant in the fresh stage or stage one and then you're going to start having uh, some different gases that are produced here. Now, in stage two, uh, remember in stage one, we had some enzymes that leaked out of the cells. And those leaked enzymes in step two are going to be begin producing more and more gases. So these gases contain sulfur um, or sulfur, sulfur compounds, if you will. Um, and and it also produces some bacteria that is going to cause some skin discoloration. So in stage two, you might have noticed in your research that this is where the skin starts to discolor. Um, so due to the gases that are being produced, the body can 
get larger or bloat, sometimes double its original size. Um, also, you're going to have a few insects start to smell those gases and fluids being released from the body. So your insect activity is going to start happening towards the end of stage two. Uh, now in stage three, you have what's called active decay. This is going to um, be when a lot of your insects show up and begin feeding on the body. Um, the fluids release through different orifices of the body or openings within the body indicate the beginning of active decay. And then when you start to see all of that sort of disappear and there is uh, great mass loss in the body, that is stage four, which we call advanced decay. So in stage three, your organs, muscles, and skin become liquefied. Um, and all the body's soft tissue starts to decompose. And then hair, bones, cartilage um, remain. And so during active decay and advanced decay, this is when the body loses most of its mass. Now, the final stage is uh, what we call dry remains. Uh, and this is where the skin becomes leathered and you only have bones that remain. Uh, and so, and there's no, because there are so many different environmental factors, there's no time frame for this per se because it does include several different factors. Um, but when we get into entomology, we will talk about some things that happen at these different stages and how investigators can use this activity to determine a time of death. All right, this ends our human decomposition uh, and death lesson. And I will see you in the next lesson where we talk about time of death.